I decided to make this quick video about menopause and different things that help just to kind of organize my own thoughts on things that help and things that don't help. See like lots of different products at the store that will be advertised for menopause. But how effective is it? Just doing in order which things are most effective. So the first thing is going to be estrogen. Somebody just walks in and says, I'm dying from these hot flashes. Secure suggestion I could give them is going to be estradiol. So let's say this is about 75 hot flashes per week. So if you get down to about 35, it's here between 35 and 40, you're gonna get around half of them gone. So placebo kind of works, looks it brings you down. Then you've got a tiny dose of estradiol, a little bit better than placebo. Then you have a little bit better dose. It gets you some relief, almost half as much. Then you get to one milligram, which is a pretty standard, like 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 are very low doses of estrogen. And they give you some benefit. Um, one milligram is a decent dose and it gets you a lot more relief. But two milligrams, as you see, as you keep increasing the estrogen, you get more and more reliable results. This is like almost, they're almost gone here. So I compare everything to estrogen. If people are really mean business, estrogen is it. But a lot of my patients don't want to take estrogen or, or their other physicians don't want them to take it or they have a family history that suggests they shouldn't take it. There's just a lot of different reasons that estrogen isn't for everyone, even though, yes, it will help with hot flashes. And right now, that's the only thing we can say. In the past, we were hoping that it would help with heart benefits, but right now, the only indication on the box is hot flashes, even though having higher estrogen levels could benefit some other things. So the next thing that you've probably heard of that's been studied is Remifemin, which is black cohosh. Most women having hot flashes have figured out black cohosh might help. So I'm looking at their study. Uh, they use this a lot in Germany. Black cohosh is something that German Commission E, which is like their FDA, is approved for menopausal issues. So in about a month, half, 50% are gone, and then 12 weeks, 70%. So it's pretty decent. It's you know almost as good as like those tiny doses of estrogen. So black cohosh is worth a try. Frequently, when I am having people use black cohosh, some of them use remifemin and they don't have a problem. They it works for them and that's great. But that extra set of people where it's not working, I might have them use a product where there are several different herbs mixed together, and sometimes that brings other benefits. Maybe there's an herb that helps with sex drive, like that'll have horny goat, Damiana. There's a few other herbs that kind of help with some menopausal complaints and I might have them use a combined supplement. At least black cohosh by itself in this particular brand has a study and it has some decent data. So then there's something called Relizin which is Swedish flower pollen. This is the back of their box. And their study by three months was 65%. So that means that a person has to pay $50 a month for three months and then $150 later, maybe they'll be here at 65%. So in the past, I had samples of this and you know, in one month, there wasn't very much hot flash relief if the patients could stick with it, and a lot of them were happy, but you know, usually if something doesn't work quickly, people kind of don't stick with it. So I didn't have a lot of people that stayed on Relizin, but people did like this particular product. There's just no downside to taking it. So I like this particular product because there really it didn't have any harmful data, flower pollen. And if it works for the person, that is awesome. But the problem is it just took a while to get great results. Most people come to me for natural, you know, bioidentical hormones or they want herbs or essential oils. They want something natural and they don't want one of these prescriptions. But this is paroxetine, which is also known as Paxil. This is a 
studied specifically for hot flashes. So paroxetine or Paxil is an antidepressant. And we knew before they even came out with this preparation that SSRIs had some benefit for hot flashes. We just happen to notice it. But this is the one that has been studied. And by week 12, you have a 60%, almost like the relevant. So it's like I said, I have other things that I recommend in preference to this, but if someone wants to use their insurance, I mean, I have a lot of different people that for a lot of different reasons might elect to do this. But I have this in here just for comparison. Where does it fall on the hot flash improvement? So, so by week four, 40% are going to notice a difference. That's good. And then it takes up to 12 weeks for everyone to notice. And like I said, we want things to happen quick. And if you look back here at estrogen, by four weeks, a lot of people were getting some relief. So estrogen's quicker and in the long run. So the next thing that I have a good number on is red clover isoflavones. So a lot of people heard of soy isoflavones. A lot of people don't want to use soy. So these are isoflavones that come out of a red clover. So this one has a study, 14% after four weeks. That's not fabulous reduction. So I don't have a lot of people on this product and 44% up to 12 weeks. So for the people that it works for, that's awesome. It, isoflavones also have a lot of bone data. So if I had somebody with bones, this might be something I would add on to their regimen. But a lot of people who are just coming in for hot flash and sleep, this, but it's here in the mix. It's got some data. Then a lot of people ask me about flaxseed. If I have a patient who is like very good already at making smoothies every day, I might have them add. So in here it says two tablespoons a day. They did it every day for seven weeks and they noticed a statistically significant reduction. So if I want them to have increased omega-3, there's a lot of other things flax seeds are good for. So, but the thing is you have to use flax seeds. You have to have a person who has that habit. I have flax seeds in my house and I use them sometimes, but I'm not a daily smoothie person. So it's some of the other things that I have mentioned are easier. A person can take a pill and be more compliant every day with a pill or even estrogen can come in a cream. It's just sometimes easier, but if patients have success with flax seeds, it does help. But it's usually something I add on, like the permensal, something I'll add to the regimen and it's not necessarily my only thing we're doing. And then there is some data on essential oils. Here's a study on salivary estrogen concentration. So they tried all these different essential oils to see which ones actually would change your estrogen level. But rose and geranium were noted to increase estrogen levels. They also have a lot of studies on fennel, which is a different essential oil that reportedly helps with hot flashes, but it did not specifically have the estrogen data. But they used fennel and vaginal creams. They studied it just for managing a lot of different complaints. Hot flashes aren't the only issues women have in menopause. And here's one on mood. So mood is a big thing. So sometimes I might have people, fennel essential oils, some companies have an edible form. You can add a drop to your water. You can add a drop to some tea. You can use it topically. Doesn't matter. This tier of my favorite ones. People can incorporate these in their body lotions. Or I just have people use whatever they can be compliant with. The person who takes something every day is going to have better success than the person who does not. So those are my top evidence-based ways to get rid of hot flashes. So. Hot flashes are an indication that your estrogen levels are, if you're in perimenopause, they're fluctuating. If you're in menopause, they're permanently low. Estrogen did 300 jobs in your body. So once you are having hot flashes, some of those jobs aren't getting done.